Hi, everyone. It's Rax. The team over at Undecember reached out to me and asked if I'd like to do a stream and a video, essentially just going over Undecember and reviewing it. I had never played it before. And since all of my friends and pretty much all the internet has asked me every single day if I'm going to try it, well, I finally agreed. So let's jump on in and I'll give you my fair and honest review on what I thought about it. So first of all, if you haven't heard about Undecember, what is it? It is a just brandly newly released game on Steam, on PC. It's also on mobile, and they also have controller support for it. It's completely free. So uh, you got nothing to lose in trying it. So let's start with the good things about the game. And honestly, the good things for me anyway, in my experience, vastly outweighed the bad things. First of all, the graphics. I thought that the worlds looked extremely good. I thought that the attention to detail was definitely there. This is not some cheaply made game. Um, the gameplay was a lot of fun. Um, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I essentially made like a sorceress type character. I ran around and I threw my fireballs and they had a lot of AoE splash damage. And as I started to learn the systems and level them up, um, I was started to just destroy pretty much everything, which... Uh, made it feel really good. It was a really responsive game. I was able to teleport out of telegraphed attacks and stuff like that. I was never lagging. So uh, I, it was pretty favorable. thought the sounds were really good. I um, usually don't play with sound in games, but if I'm going to review one, then I'm definitely going to turn it on. Um, I thought it really like enhanced my experience. And uh, you know, compared to most games, I thought this might actually be one that I would actually play with the sound on. Um, the menuing was pretty intuitive. That's a big one for me. I like to be very efficient when I play games. And if the menuing is cumbersome and stupid, then I'm just not going to like the game. So I appreciated how quickly I could zip through everything once I figured out what I was doing. Then there's some things that come later on in the game that I really didn't get to that I had to talk to some of my friends about, about how it actually goes. But the general consensus is later on in the game, the bosses get very, very tough. And it's not one of those things where you can go in and fight a boss and get him to half health and die and walk back in and they're at half health and you just finish them off anyway. Um, they do have like some instant resurrect scrolls that you can buy. But in general, if you want to actually um, have the challenge, if you die on the boss, the boss, the boss's HP resets. So you got to actually beat it. And a lot of the people said that the act bosses, especially the later act bosses, were insanely hard this is something like the pinnacle bosses from path of exile so um that's something that i have i've really missed in, in a game like diablo everything is just so freaking easy usually especially the bosses so uh it, it's something that i was very glad to hear another thing that i've heard is i was having fun doing the leveling section but a lot of people have been saying that the end game is a lot more fun than the leveling part which is always a super great sign because you usually just blitz through the leveling process instantly and you want to know, like, what are you going to be doing all day long after that? Um, another thing that they have, another a couple of features that they have in the game, which, again, is not available um, in Diablo 3, is they have auto pickup from the pets. This is something we've been begging for for a million years. My pets just running around picking up everything. Thank God then I can just keep fighting. They have an auto potion system, and it's kind of like a pretty intelligent system. You can configure it to however you want it to work. You can set like the thresholds for when it activates, and there's multiple different potion slots. Um, I didn't get very far into the game, so I didn't get any like advanced potions or anything, but I'm assuming that later on in the game, they're going to have a more like advanced system, maybe like PoE's flask system. Like if you haven't noticed the trend here, they borrow a lot of ideas from a lot of other games and kind of threw it into one and in a lot of cases this seems to work and another thing that they have which was it really threw me by surprise when i turned it on is they have something called like strategic targeting or something and it essentially says if you stop moving then the game is going to try to like attack and it like auto targets monsters so it became where i would just like dive into a huge pack like huge room and a huge pack of monsters and i would just let the strategic targeting just detonate them all. As long as I had built my character correctly, it was just going to wipe out the room. Uh, again, it threw me off guard in the beginning, but the more I used it, I was like, oh, this is kind of nice. However, my friends uh, certainly warned me that that's like strategic targeting thing is not very helpful in the end game. Um, they said you have to play yourself, otherwise you die. So if that is true, that's kind of the best of both worlds. It kind of helps you 
level up kind of, you know, the the less fun part of the journey. And then finally, when you get into the end game, you have to actually try. So if that's how it actually works, that sounds like a fantastic system to me. So now let's talk about some areas of improvement, some things that I really wish were in the game that maybe weren't. The first thing, I'm going to complain about this, about every single game that doesn't have this for the rest of my life. They need to add force move. Like that is the far superior way to move other than left clicking. And I guess you could plug in a controller and a controller's joystick is essentially a force move. But I did not see a key binding in the settings for force move. So if I missed it, well, I'm, I apologize to Undecember, but I don't see it. I would love to see them add that. Um, another thing about it, uh, and this comes with like experience, right? But um, some of the upgrade systems that they have are pretty cool, but they're overwhelming at first. For example, they have this like honeycomb, color-coded, linking, like Final Fantasy VII Materia slash PoE system where you kind of upgrade your skills. It seems pretty cool. Um, I kind of figured it out as I went. It's one of those things where you do the tutorial and it seems like it makes sense, but then you actually try to make it link and connect correctly. And what I thought was right certainly wasn't. Um, so they could do maybe a little bit better on the tutorials there and uh, explaining exactly how those systems work. But it's one of those things where if you played it, you know, for a lot of hours, it would just be natural to you and you would just know exactly how to do it. So that would just come with time. Um, sometimes another thing that I would say is it was confusing where to know, like to go next with your different quests. At one point I went way too far ahead and I killed a boss only to realize I had to go back to do a prerequisite quest. I did that. And when I came back, the boss was dead and I was soft locked. Luckily they have a system in the game to just reset things. So I just reset it and killed the boss again. No problem. And went along my merry way. But I wouldn't have ran into that problem if I wasn't a little bit confused in where to go into the first place. The final thing that I'll say for an area of improvement is there's like this interesting way of doing this, and maybe it's because like they designed this for mobile first and then ported it to PC, I'm not sure. But some of the boxes and the doors, when you get close to them, they have like a little hand above them that you can interact with. But instead of clicking the treasure chest or the door, you have to click on the hand to open it. This was very counterintuitive to me for every other ARPG I've ever played. If you want to open a door, you click on the door itself. I would like to see them change that at least for the PC version. And then of course, you can't do a review of a game without looking at the monetization system. And uh, I had a lot of different opinions there. So I, ha I really had to you know, talk to a bunch of different people that were actually far into the end game and had actually explored it. Um, but if Diablo 3 is a zero on the pay to win system, which is Diablo 3, you can't buy anything. There's, there's no shop in the game. You can't buy anything. And Diablo Immortal is a 100, like a super predatory, you know, terrible game. Then it seems like this game is maybe about a 25. So here's how it works from how I understand it from talking with people. And I looked at the shop myself. Most of the value that you can get if you're going to spend money in the game, is for convenience. You get auto-looting. You get extra stash tabs and stuff like that. Now, you can buy materials and currencies, which you can use to go into the game and go on their auction house and buy items. But for the people that are pretty far into the game, they say, this is pretty worthless because the items that you can buy on the auction house suck compared to what you can farm yourself or compared to what you can craft. So buying those items is pretty worthless. They also said that everything that you can buy in the auction house is pretty easily grindable. So there's really no point to buy it anyway. So if all of that is true, which I don't know from personal experience if that is true, I had to just do some research. It seems like this, this pay to win system lands about in the area of like Path of Exile and Lost Ark where Lost Ark, you can buy power, but you can still get to the highest level just being a free-to-play player. And there's like, uh, you know, convenience systems, with porting and stuff like that. And Path of Exile sells all the different tabs that you really need. And by the way, people have said that you really do need the tabs for the end game because you get so much, so many different uh, materials that you will need the tabs. So that's about as the most honest 
uh, interpretation of the monetization that I could give you in talking to several different people that are deep into the end game that have looked into it. So overall, what are my thoughts? I do think this is a pretty cool new ARPG and it's free. You got nothing to lose. And it sounds like if you want to go really deep into the end game, you can just grind what you want. You can pay for the convenient stuff if you want, like the auto looting and some of the tabs. But it doesn't sound like you can just buy your way to the top without actually playing the game, which is, you know, a lot better than Diablo Immortal. If you'd like to try it, download it from Steam. I'll have the link, I'm sure, in the description or in a pinned comment. Go check it out. I had a lot of fun. I'd like to thank the Undecember team for reaching out to me and letting me do the sponsorship with them. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Have you guys tried it? Um, how far are you into the game? And was my assessment essentially what you saw as well? Um, everyone that I know that has been playing this game has really enjoyed it. So maybe you have another cool game to play until Diablo 4 comes out. Anyway, guys, have a good one and I'll see you in the next one.